The Tiger is finally finished. It's been registered and I'm having a blast with it on the road, taking it to cruise-ins. It was quite a project. It literally started with a blank sheet of paper and it was a dream car for me. As you can see, it's not your ordinary car. And to be honest, if, if I can build this, you can build this too. You just need a little help to get started. So without further ado, let's go to a 17 minute summary of the project from start to finish. It all starts with a concept drawing. Here you see the side view with the engine and rear drivetrain in place, as well as the SAE mannequin. The mannequin is a standardized depiction of the human form that fits 90% of the population, so it's a great way to size your cockpit. Here you see the top view, and now the front and rear view. You can see at this point, it's really not a very pretty car, but it's enough to get going on the next step. It's time to bring your concept to life in a 3D clay model. Here you can see I started with a base board of plywood and then applied a picture of the top view to the bottom. That gives me the circumference of the body shape. Then you build a form on top of that, an armature. In this case, I use thin plywood and that gives you something to press the clay against. You also see that I've got a mannequin here. It happens to be a one foot tall mannequin. So that makes a good representation of a six foot tall person by making this a one six scale model. Then you apply the clay and use a square to cut lines into the clay that you've applied to the circumference of your top view, as you can see here. That gives you an outline of the car that you can then start to sculpt. And here is the finished clay model. You can see that it has changed slightly from the original concept drawings. The side view is slightly different. The back view is very different but it, the design tends to evolve as you go from step to step. Even though this changed, there's really no reason to go back to the concept drawing and update it because it served its, its purpose. It's brought you to this point of the clay model and it's ready to go forward. It's important to note that this was the first version of the clay model. As the design progressed and as I built the car, it changed several more times and thankfully, got more attractive. It's time to design the chassis that'll go inside the body. That will be done in a 3D CAD program. You start out by building a design studio by taking very precise photos of the side view, front and rear view, and the top view. Then those are imported into a 3D CAD program to produce what looks like a room with the side view on a side wall, the back view on the back wall, and the top view on the floor. Then looking at the side view on the studio, you can then build a chassis that fits within the extents. Same as from the top view, to make sure that the body sides fit within the sides of what's on the floor, the top view. You can see here, here the cantilevered suspension. It'll hide the springs inside the body. The different color tubes represent different sizes of tubes. You can see the engine and the rear subframe. And here we have another SAE 3D human mannequin to help me ensure that the chassis, the cockpit will be large enough. Once the chassis is finished, you need to test it to ensure it's gonna be strong enough. Large companies use expensive CAD programs to stress test frames. 
As a home builder, you don't have those facilities available to you, so you need to come up with another method for testing strength. A simple and inexpensive way of doing stress testing is by building a scale model from balsa wood. This one is built in the same 1 6 scale. It has different size pieces of balsa that represent and are scaled to the different size tubings that were in the plan. You can then manually, just in your hands, start applying forces to it. Torsional forces, as you can see I'm doing here, load forces from the top, forces from the side even to represent collisions. Here I'm putting torsional load in and you can see a slight bit of deflection in the, uh, the front subframe here. This told me right off the bat that I need a little bit more uh, support in this area. I was going to add some gussets here to fix the problem, but it's much easier to fix it in this stage than after the chassis is built. So this is vsusp.com. It is a virtual suspension modeler. It allows you to model your suspension and tune it so you'll have uh, good geometry for your vehicle. It's a conceptual model you see up top here. The blue part is the chassis. These red angles here are the spindles, and of course these are the tires. This particular line represents the steering tie rod arms. So this allows you to simulate what happens when your car, when you're going over bumps, and making sure that your camber doesn't go out of whack. It also allows you to simulate what happens when you go when you lean and allows you to tune this so you get no tire scrub between the left and right uh, tires. It keeps your camber in line and it takes usually several rounds of looking at this before you get a good balance of all the parameters. The chassis is designed and the front suspension geometry has been tuned, so it's time to get busy and actually build the car. I start with the chassis build with the front suspension as you can see here. You can see that I have a double A-arm suspension with cantilevered springs in the middle. I was able to reuse the spindles, some of the steering tie rods, and the coilovers, which saved me quite a bit of money in the construction. The steering unit is from a Mustang II. That's a very common tool or common unit that's uh, used in many custom cars and they're cheap and easy to find. And here is the chassis, about 90% complete, but you can start to see how it's forming up. The back portion here is the uh, part of the donor vehicle that I used. It was a Yamaha Raptor 700 ATV. One of the fastest ATVs ever built. Has plenty of power for this lightweight vehicle. You can see all the different sizes of tubing that we talked about during the design phase and how the cantilever front suspension is now laid out. In the center there it will be the seat. That will be filled out later. But this turned out to be a very lightweight frame, only weighed about 60 pounds when finished. Now it's time to fabricate all the systems to make this chassis a running and driving vehicle. That includes the electrical system, the pedals, the steering, the floors, the seat, the fuel system, the cooling system, and all the other systems that are needed to get it down the road. The chassis is now 100% complete and I have taken it for the maiden voyage. I've been driving it around my neighborhood, terrorizing my neighborhood. It handles well, it steers well, it brakes well, everything on the car works. So now it's time to put the body on. It took one more revision of my clay model. You can see here it's been refined yet a bit more. The proportions are different. It's lower, a little bit longer. The next step 
is to build a body plug. The body plug is a temporary mold used to form the final body panels. The plug is made up of many layers as you can see here. So let's get started on the plywood armature. Building the body plug is a messy process. So the first step is to cover as much of the car as possible with plastic wrap to keep it clean. Then attach plywood along the chassis rails in a very secure manner because this is where you're going to attach the foam. Then you glue on the foam layers. In this case I used XPS foam which is available at your local home improvement shop. It comes in various thicknesses and you'll end up gluing on a number of layers on top of the plywood armature. Once you have enough layers of foam on you can start using a variety of shaping and sanding tools to bring it to the shape that you desire. As my concept came to life in full scale, I realized there were some aspects of the design that just didn't scale up very well. So I ended up revising my clay model one more time. This time adding what I call my little pantaloons on the back, as well as a much longer cone shape behind the head. And here is the completed foam stage of the body plug. Then plaster is applied and sanded to a smooth finish. XPS foam is quite fragile and very sensitive to certain chemicals. When I say sensitive, I mean it literally will melt if you put the wrong chemical on it. So at this stage, we put an epoxy resin on to protect it and give it a bit more strength. In this case, it looks green because I put some green dye in the resin so I could ensure coverage. Then fiberglass cloth is applied and saturated with polyester resin to create a hard shell. Once the fiberglass has cured, gel coat is then applied and allowed to cure. And the final step here is using automotive body filler to produce a final A-class surface. The last step in building the plug is to apply an automotive grade finish. Now it's time to create a female mold of the body plug. The body shape is complex three-dimensional shape, so you can't make the mold in just a single piece. You need to make it in multiple interlocking pieces. So here I am breaking it up the uh, body and starting on the side by putting flanges around the first piece that I will mold. The flanges are made of foam core board and are glued to the surface. Then a release agent is applied to the surface of the plug so the mold won't stick and gel coat is applied. Then a thick layer of fiberglass is applied to form a rigid mold. Here you can see the mold with the original foam core boards pulled away. You can see the edge of the flange that will interlock with the next piece to be molded around the front of the body. And here is the side and front sections of the mold pulled together with an interlocking flange. Once the fiberglass mold has cured, you can pull off the sections to reveal the negative side of the mold. Here are all the interlocking pieces of the mold. As you can see, there are quite a few pieces. And here are all the interlocking parts of the mold put back together. The mold is now ready to create the final body panels. It's finally time to build the actual body panels. These are the body panels that are going to go on to the car. Here you can see that I've already applied a thick layer of gel coat and are smoothing out the coat before I start applying the fabric. In this case, I'm using a combination of carbon fiber and some lightweight fiberglass to make up the final body panels. The carbon fiber is used to put strength in the long straight panels and the fiberglass droops better over sharp edges and that's used in multiple layers for the sharp areas around the mold. The fabric is then saturated with epoxy resin 
to create a hard body panel. The combination of resin, fabrics, and core material were established by trying numerous samples to get the right combination that would be both light and strong. Then I added vinyl foam ribs to add strength to the panels. The ribs were then encapsulated with two layers of a lightweight fiber, fiberglass fabric. This created quite a strong but light panel. Once the carbon fiber body panels have cured, they're removed from the mold. Now it's time to build the interior panels. On the interior panels, I use a moldless method to create them. In other words, the molds were temporary and thrown away once the final panels were built. Here you can see I'm building the temporary panels out of foam core and typing them together into place. The foot box was a very complicated piece to make, as you can see. Again, carbon fiber and fiberglass fabric were laid over top the disposable mold, and then epoxy resin was applied to create a hard but lightweight interior panel. The side panels were made in a similar way with foam core board and some XPS foam where curves were needed. Again, this was covered with carbon fiber and fiberglass fabric to form the final lightweight panel. And here are the final interior panels. Some have been sanded to ensure that the fabric and the panels don't show through in the upholstery and it is completely paneled out. So the Tiger 700 started with a Yamaha 700cc motorcycle style engine with five speed sequential transmission and reverse, then designed and built a thin wall chromoly space frame that only weighed about 60 pounds and that space frame put all the components down low and towards the center. For example, the radiator and fuel tank are underneath the seat. The front suspension is cantilevered so that lays the, the coilovers down low and the engine was pushed forward to just behind the driver's seat and pushed down as low as it could. That put all the center of mass right in the middle of the car with nothing in the overhangs and the center of gravity way down low. In fact, the center of gravity is below the seat of your pants. Then around that, I designed carbon fiber body and the whole package only weighs about 640 pounds. So there you have it, the entire build cycle in just 17 minutes. If you'd like to build your own dream car, there's nothing magic about it. If I can do it, you can do it. You just need to get started. Try this guide. It'll take you through the basic steps of not just building this car, but any car, your dream car. You just need to get out there and get started.